This product was supplied to me by iStation.com and this is an electronic kit of a game which is controlled by a microcontroller it has some buttons and some displays as you can see and what I quite liked about it that it also contains a case. I have to admit that at this point I haven't even checked what kind of games are pre-programmed on this STC Micro and as you can see there is a seven segment display and also dot matrix display. I think there is some sort of Tetris game on this. So it, I think it is going to be uh, you know, a nice relaxing Saturday afternoon project to solder all this together and put uh, it into the box and I will see how my kids like it who grew up on games on iPad which probably offer you know a little bit more user experience than this simple kit but nevertheless I think it's going to be fun building and also playing with it. Before I show the build video I thought I'd just show you how the final thing looks like. So as you can see it's, uh, it's a nice case and uh, you can see the whole uh, PCB from both sides all the components are on one side, there is nothing on the other side and um, with the kit you are getting all these uh, plastic pieces, basically a front and a back and then the four sides and then it's screwed together using you know, a couple of nuts and standoffs which keep the uh, PCB sort of in the middle and you have one cut out for the USB port, the mini USB and interestingly there is also a cut out on the other side maybe to have access to this uh, programming pins which uh, they haven't supplied any actual pins so maybe you can use some right angle pins and then you can plug uh, something in here if you ever want to reprogram this. Not that I have the original program which is running on this at the moment. In terms of the user interface uh, you get four buttons so it's like up and down and left and right. Um, not all of them are used in each of the modes and then you have a return and a fire and then the, this return button also acts as a pose. You have the micro, uh, the STC micro in the middle, which contains the, the code, obviously, a buzzer, an on off switch, a four, sorry, a three digit seven segment display, which is going to show you the score, and the two eight by eight um, red screens or a matrix, LED matrix, which is, well, that's basically the main screen. And you are getting a small mini USB. Uh, lead as well. So I'm just going to plug this in and I'm going to plug in to this uh, USB power supply. Oh yeah and it was already turned on so if I turn it on you get this animation and a little bit of sound and you have probably noticed that when I switched it on is that the top row is not uh, working I don't know why it is. Um, I've uh, resoldered all the joints and I, you know, visually inspected all the joints for the LED display and also for the micro, and I couldn't see any missed joints, um, and I couldn't really figure out what would be wrong. If if you happen to have any ideas how I can fix it, just let me know in the comment section. I mean, I can easily unscrew this, but. In for most games, it doesn't really matter that your top row is not shown. Um, because, well, you can get away with not having that top row. In the meantime, I've reduced the iris on the camera because you couldn't really see the screen. So I'm going to shoot the rest of the video like this. So if I, again, if I switch it on, you see this animation and then you are in the main menu, which um, allows you to select from the games. Uh, so you see this is game number one and you can see the top score here. And if I use the left and right buttons, I can just um, switch between the games. So the first game is the classic Tetris. The second game is uh, the snake. The third game is so, some sort of racer. So you are with, with car and then you are on the road and then some other cars are coming and then you have to avoid collision. The fourth one is Space Invaders. The fifth one I haven't managed to figure out is something with numbers. Um, so no idea what this is. This is uh, the first page of the settings, which basically controls brightness. It's nice that they have included something like that. And the last one is allows you to switch all the sound on and off. And I have to use this. So this is now sounds off and then sounds on. That actually there is some music in the games and then there are also sound effects. 
it would be nice if I can turn off the music because it's quite annoying but uh, fortunately enough it only pay, pays in the, plays in the beginning and then it uh, basically just um, stops and switches to sound effects sound effects and so yeah that's it and when you change between the games you can see your high score on the numeric display so the first one is oh and by the way I start the game with this button and now you can hear the music playing and then it stops and it's not going to play again and by the time uh, by the way you can see that the um, uh, this block has stopped because I pressed this is the pause start button as well so you can pause the game at any point so I start the game and it's classic Tetris so you can rotate this one then you can move it by left and right and you can lower the uh, the pieces using the down key if you want to and if you manage to clear a row oops yeah you get some sound and anim um, animation and your high, sc high score goes up the one thing I, uh, I haven't figured out is how to actually get out of the game so now I'm going to unpause it and I'm just going to lose on purpose so now I have a high score of 2 and now I can get out using the return button so I can just go to the next game which is snake and because I've changed the game now it plays the score and now it stopped okay and I most probably crashed to the wall the next game is this uh, sort of racer game and this doesn't have a score but it has this I guess this is engine sound so you just have to avoid the obstacles and with the fire you can speed up and the score is basically how long you can stay on the road without colliding into somebody or probably in this case how, you, how much you last before you go mad uh, by this uh, constant beeping so that's it and four uh, I, I probably like, I like this one the best is the space invaders and the fire is really really quick on this one so I think you can play this one as long as you like because it's really easy to clear the enemies as you can see and you can get loads of points cool right and again I can pause pause the game uh, using the return button so I think it's fun again if I want to get out of the menu I just have to wait until the dots reach me and the game and the game ends and that was it and number five is I don't know I can change this number and and then it generates some other numbers and then the scores go up and down I've never played anything like this so I have no idea what this is and again here you can see that um, well missing the, the top row is actually a bit of a problem because I don't see the top uh, digit but uh, yeah so I don't know maybe it's some sort of guessing game no idea sorry about that I don't even know how it ends but I'm getting 94 scores or 94 94 points maybe 92 next time anyway so that's our little game and now let's see how I built it soldering this kit is not very difficult I don't think there is any particular order in which the parts should be soldered in I use this PCB holder which allows me to easily turn the PCB over whilst it is still in the holder I populate the components on one side fix them in place with a bit of a blue tack turn it over and solder the pins I started with the USB socket it needs a fair amount of solder to secure the side tabs otherwise just align the pins with the holes on the board next I did all the buttons fortunately the pins are not symmetrical so it only goes in one way next was a buzzer it has a plus sign on the top so make sure that is aligned with the positive terminal on the PCB the on-off switch is a little bit tricky 
There is a small square marking on the PCB. That should align with a small rectangular hole on the underside of the switch. Next was the MCU socket. The socket has a small notch on one end, which should line up with a similar marking on the PCB. There is a small cap that goes above the socket. Observe the terminals, so it goes in the correct way. Next was the 7 segment display. The decimal dot on the display helps to put it in the correct way. The matrix displays have a small tab in the middle of one edge. That must be aligned with the marking on the PCB. I solder them with a foil holding them together. It helps to align them and the two will appear as one large screen. And that was the last component for me. Before I inserted a micro, I connected the USB power supply and measured the 5 volt on the VCC and the uh, ground terminals on the back. This is just to make sure that my power lines are correct. Next, I fitted the micro and gave it a test. Putting the case together is straightforward. Remove the paper backing on both sides, so you end up with a clear acrylic pieces. Put four screws into the back piece and secure them with the short standoffs. Place the PCB onto the end of the standoffs, pop on the button caps, screw in the longer standoffs, place the four sides and finally place the top piece. Fasten all of them together with the four remaining screws. Power up and test if it still works.